Hey Sam, do you know where you put that chapstick yesterday? Okay. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Molly and Lucy. Good morning. Good morning, Blake. Good morning, London. Good morning, Wesley and Mia. Good morning, Maverick. Good morning, Nate and Madison. Good morning, Addison and Juliet. Hi, Katie. Good morning, Lily and Kaden. Good morning, Zach. Good morning, Brooke. Good morning, Nolan. Good morning, Joshua and Chris. Good morning, Adriana. We are going to do a bunny or rabbit with the pet shop. I think I wrote that down, but yes, we're gonna do that. Oh, uh, Hank, I don't know where he is. I'll get him, don't worry. Hi, Joss. Oh, he's over by Brooks because Brooks is- It's 11 o'clock. And it's 11 o'clock. Hi, Sophia. Hi, Helena. Hi, Lila. Hey. Hey, Keith. Come here. Who's this? Oh, no, almost. I almost had him, but the bagel still takes precedence. We'll get him over here in a minute. Guinea pig will also be in the pet shop. Yeah. Oh, almost. Morning, Alexa. Alexis and Eliza. He's too quick today. Hi, Ella. Good morning, Colin and Jack. Good morning, Allie. A couple more minutes and we'll get started for our final day of the farm. Morning, Thomas. People like playing from their houses and like there's a tournament. Okay. Put Ziggy in the shop. That's a great idea. We did Hank on the farm. So we'll do a Ziggy dog in the pet shop.
Maddie, what grade are you in at Elchester? Good morning, Sophia. Hi, Kate, Chris, and Kathy. Good morning, good morning. Lots of them are coming in now. Okay, so we are going... First, we have a little. The rest of your life. If you want to have a little good morning. Good morning from the crazy. Oh, legs. Say good morning. Oh, you hear Ziggy say good morning. Hi, Mike. Pug. a little loopy right now because he wants some food. And everybody's finally awake, so he's super excited. All his buddies are down here making delicious things to eat if he wants some. And now Ziggy's heading over there. He's going to get some treats. Now Hank is so sad. Look at his sad little face. Because I'm keeping him hostage over here and he can't get to the treat. I'll bring you some chubby face. That's right. I'm going to put him down. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get started. So we are doing four... Not quite animals, three animals and an insect today. Um, so we can finish out the farm. And then after you have all your animals drawn in your farm, you can do all the extra coloring that you haven't done, um, like the grass and pond and things like that. Okay, so today we're going to start with what every farm needs, and that's a rooster. I know we've done, we did a chicken, we did a hen earlier. So this is the rooster. The rooster is an adult male chicken, and it gets its name from where it roosts on top of things like on top of a barn or on top of a fence or on a tree, um, and it sits high on a perch so he can guard the whole area where his hen is living, and if she has, if she's nesting the eggs, then he protects everybody. So he sits and roosts on top, so that's how he got his name, rooster. And they're known for doing their crowing, and usually it's... You know, the cockle-doodle-doo cockle first thing in the morning, which can happen because they usually oh, do yes. crow when they first wake up. It might not necessarily be when the sun is um, starting to rise, but that's what they're known for. But they will crow um, many times throughout the day, but always when they first wake up. Um, and they eat plants and worms and bugs. And then on a farm, they are fed corn and millet and sunflower seeds and oyster shells, which I thought was interesting, um, and that they get all the nutrients from those. So let's go ahead and draw our rooster. And when I was looking up roosters, I'm um, doing my research and I was looking at how I should color my rooster, and they can be very vibrant colors. They can be like sort of browns and tans, but they also can be like reds and oranges and their tail can kind of go into blues and purples. It's really pretty. So um, that's what I did mine, mine those shades on, um, of color. So you can do whatever you want, like just like we've always said. I think though I just saw a question a week the week after the pet shop I think we're gonna do like a Jurassic Park like dinosaurs um, those kind of animals um, and I'm gonna do some research about what other animals were around during that time not just the dinosaurs um, and some scenery and things like that so that'll be a little bit different than we've been doing and um, and I'm not 100% sure beyond that I've had some ideas so we're just gonna take it week by week at this point and see um, how things are. And also before I forget, next week is every day at 11 because I have meetings the first half of the week that are gonna go until 1030. So I just thought let's just keep the whole week at 11. Even though technically, I don't know if Howard County is aware of this, but technically next Thursday, Friday, and the following Monday is our spring break. Not that anybody's going anywhere, but um, Technically, we are off those days, but we're going to keep it at 11 all next week just so we don't get confused. Okay, so let's start with our rooster. Okay, we're going to start with a smallish circle. And that's eventually going to be the head, and I know the head of a rooster isn't quite a circle, 
but that's what the area that's going to be. And we're going to make um, a large U that comes down and then swoops to a point. I'm going to hold this up in a minute. And then you're going to do a U on the other side. Actually, I kind of made that. I'm oh, sorry. Um, that's not as wide. And then swoops over. Kind of starts off like this. And the bigger you make this area here, the more um, plump your rooster will be. Mine's a bit on the thin side, but I can make them a little bit wider when I start adding feathers. This is definitely one and you're going to need to erase some lines. Okay, now we're going to add the features that are around the head. And I don't know the technical terms. I did not write them down. So if you know, maybe you can let me know. We're going to do the feather that's on the top of the head up here. And then the, one, the thing that hangs down underneath his beak is going to go here. And then he has a beak and an eye. So we're probably going to want to erase these lines in here. I'm going to hold that up for a minute so we can catch up. All right, so now we're going to um, get a little bit more decorative on the main body. So we're first going to add a feather layer right here. If you have to erase any lines, if you want to make it a little wider than the body, you can. And then we're going to add a layer of feather sort of in the middle. It starts going towards the tail. You can make this as big or as fluffy as you want. And you'd want to erase, um, see, I probably want to erase this line here. I saw two good ideas. Somebody said um, forest animals and somebody said mythological creatures. And I actually had um, some students in a sixth grade class that I taught when I was student teaching. We did an animation and they did mythological creatures in the forest. So maybe I can sort of combine that and make it a magical forest. And so we can have like a unicorn and a griffin, but then we can also have a fox and a raccoon or something like that. That's a good idea. All right, so now we're gonna add that back tail. So this swoop that we started is sort of the beginning and we're just gonna kind of add to it. You can make it as big and fluffy as you want. So you can just sort of add to it and if you need to erase, you can. So I would erase all of that, that pencil line in there that I don't need anymore. And then we're going to give it a little um, wing feather. Yeah. So 
I saw the rainforest idea. I think that's great. Just wrote that down. All right, now we're going to give them some legs. So we're going to have the front leg that's going to come down here, and then the back leg here. And of course, if you're going to make him perched on something, you might want to make him um, hook around. You see the insect world. That could be something we could do. A bunch of different insects. And then we're going to do his little feet. So they have a back talon and then front talons. So they can really grip the um, a fence post or the tree, wherever they're sitting. So that's our rooster. <laughs> no spiders. I don't like spiders either. I'd have a really hard time doing insect world. I would do it for you guys, but I would have a hard time. I do not like bugs. All right, one more minute. I'm going to hold this up. All right. Rooster. All right, the next one, which was another um, highly requested animal, another bird, and that is the owl. Um, so I did some just basic information about owls, and then I did a specific barn owl, because that's kind of what we'd be drawing, right? We're on a farm. Um, so there's about 200 species of owls, and most owls are solitary, or they're just with their um, their mate. So it's not they don't um, live in big groups or flocks, I guess. They sort of say to themselves, or just with their mate, because they do usually mate for life, or at least the barn owls, I got that back from the barn owl. The barn owls do mate for life. Um, but they also are um, mostly nocturnal. The barn owl is nocturnal, um, so that means they hunt and move around at night. They have binocular vision, which means they can like narrow in and see far away. Um, and they have excellent hearing, and that's usually how they um, find their prey, is they can hear it moving around. And then they have the sharp talons for capturing, for swooping down and capturing their prey and taking them back with them. They eat small mammals, so like mice and other rodents, chipmunks. Oh, a chipmunk is a great idea for a forest animal. Let me write that down. Um, and they might eat, uh, they eat insects and they might eat other small birds too. Now the barn owl is the most widely distributed owl and it's found almost everywhere except for the polar and desert regions. They're nocturnal, like I said, so they hunt and move around at night and they hunt their small mammal prey by sound, so hearing them scurrying around the farm. And like I said, they usually mate for life. So they find a life partner and stick with that owl and that's um, how they live. Hank is eating a bone by my feet. Okay, so let's get started with our owl. Now I um, made my barn kind of far away in my picture, a little too small for putting an owl in the, um, up in the, I guess the, the hay area. So I just drew a little tree off to the side of my um, farm and put the owl in the tree. So that's how I did mine. Okay. All right, so we're going to start by making sort of a rounded, sort of like a combination between a rounded rectangle and an oval. And this is going to be the main body. And then we're going to add the eyes. Um, sometimes the eyes are just circles. Um, the one, when I was looking at some ideas, I kind of with one that had um, sort of this pointy feather around their eye. 
So it's going to be, their eye is going to be a basic circle, but then kind of comes to a little point right there. And I'll show, and when I pick it up, you'll be able to see better. So I obviously would erase those lines. But you do want the owl's eyes to break the plane of the body. What that means is going outside the main body line here and here. Then you're going to make two more circles for the eyes. The part that would be the whites of the mm -hmm. eyes and then the pupil in the middle. <clears throat> Let me show you where you would erase. So erase those extra lines. Now we're going to add a nose. Just like a long diamond shape. <clears throat> And then we're going to have wings. And they're going to come off of each side. I should have made my inner eye circles a little bit bigger. And before we draw the rest of it, we want to draw it something to be um, perched on. We're just going to draw for now. Draw a little branch. I'm going to make these a little bigger. All right, now we're going to draw the talons, and they're going to be clutched to the branch, so to speak. And then there's going to be a tail feather that kind of goes behind the branch. And then we're just going to give them some um, feather texture on the body by just making little points, so triangles without tops. Now when I drew mine, I know I drew one this morning, I don't know if you saw it when I was just reminding everybody that we are at 11 today. I did mine yellow and turquoise. Actually, I think I did, yeah, I did it the same way on my final. So owls can be, I mean, generally they're um, sort of natural colors like browns and blacks and whites and gray. Um, but have fun. I like it colorful if you want to. Okay. All right. So our next one. All right, it's very bird heavy today, but I feel like we needed to we needed to we have a rooster and we have a hen. So what of course do we need? Some baby chickens and chicks. Um, and since I already gave information about the hen um, and the rooster, so you kind of know about them um, as adults, but I just want to give a little bit of uh, information about them from what they ha what happens when they're um, when the hens lay the eggs. So the hens lay the eggs, and then she sits on them to keep them warm, and they usually hatch in about three weeks, so 21 days, um, and the what happens is the chicks start pecking through the shell 
And then um, they usually all break open the shells and come out within a couple of days of each other. And then the mom cares for them and protects them and shows them how to get uh, food and water. She does this for several weeks. And then of course, if they're on the farm, they all stay together and it's, um, they all grow up together, but she really nurtures them and mothers them for a, a few weeks right after they're born to make sure they know how to get food and water. And she protects them from any predators that may be around. All right, so we are going to do our baby chick. And when I put my chicks on the farm, I made a couple of them and I put them by the hen. Okay, we're going to start with a circle. And then we're just going to add a second circle, sort of like a snowman, right underneath of it. Okay, remember um, it, with my second graders, I draw snowmen. Uh, we do the snowmen at night. And if you remember, you don't make the two circles stacked right on top of each other. You put one, you put the second one just underneath, kind of like the cakes, um, so it looks like they're together. Then we're going to add a beak, and the beak is just going to be sort of a rounded triangle. And some eyes. Then we're going to give him some wings. The wings just go off the side from the top of the second circle. Probably could have brought my wings out a little wider, but that's okay. Now, one thing you're going to add to the top of his head is a little feather that kind of curls. So it's just sort of like a swirl like that. And of course you want to get rid of that line. So it sort of gives it its baby look. And then we're just going to add some legs. And then erase that line there. Then you have your baby chick. When I drew mine, I have one fully drawn and then I have one that's sort of behind the signs. So you don't really see his legs. He's pretty cute. Where's the Hank? Is the Hank by you? Hank by you? Hank. Okay. That is our chick. Hey, come here. Yeah. He's just coming. Yeah. All right, we're taking a Hank break before we draw our last thing. We're gonna give him some hair. Oh, he's so pretty. <laughs> he didn't like that. All he wants is a snack. Here comes snack break. There he goes. Loves a good cracker. Mm, crackers for Hank. All right, I'm gonna put him down for our last thing and then I'll try to get him one more time. Say bye. All right, so our last thing, I think I alluded to it, is an insect. And if you're like me, and you colored your sky already, and this insect is flying, then um, what I did, and here's just 
a pro tip, if you will. I drew my butterfly. Oh, I just said what it was. It's a butterfly. <laughs> I drew my butterfly on a separate piece of paper, cut it out, and uh, glued them onto the sky of my final paper. So that's just a way um, to get around that if you've already colored in your sky like I did. So we are doing a butterfly. And it is an insect that is related to the moth, um, and it, but it often has brightly colored wings. Not always, and you'll see some that aren't very colorful, um, but they often have the brightly colored wings. And of course, the most popular one or the most, um, the one that's found a lot around here is the monarch. And in fact, I think most second grades in Howard County do a whole unit right now on butterflies. Um, and it's unfortunate that we're not in school because I believe, it, um, at least at St. John's Lane, that they order the kits um, that, have, that come with the eggs and you get to watch it um, go from a caterpillar and then it go, makes a chrysalis and it sits in there for a while and then it comes out as a butterfly and then you get to release them into the sky. When my now sixth grader did that and they released them outside when he was in second grade, one of the butterflies landed on on his cheek, uh, or maybe it was his shoulder. It was something in this area because they took a picture and sent it to me. So it's a shame because I, my youngest is in second grade, so he's not going to get to do that. Or, well, maybe. Um, but they're also supposed to go, I think there's a butterfly garden around here that we've never been to, but I was planning to go on that field trip. So if they get to go to it, oh, there's Brooks. <laughs> Um, we also have done the butterfly kit at home before, um, so that's something I would highly suggest. It was lots of fun to watch them grow and develop, and then we released them out into our yard. Uh, and then all my kindergarten friends, um, if you've had me for kindergarten, um, and I don't remember if I did it at Ilchester or Thunder Hill, but um, I talk a lot about Eric Carl. I love him and all of his work. And of course, we all know the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And we just did, right before we left, most of my kindergarten friends got to finish this project. We um, created paper like Eric Carl, and we created a butterfly. And we also listened to the story and watched the story. Um, of how the butter or the caterpillar eats everything, gets really chubby, forms the chrysalis, and then comes out a beautiful butterfly. So that's why I wanted to do a butterfly today because it's spring and the weather is getting more and more beautiful every day. Maybe you can go out and find some butterflies today. Maybe that can be your science um, lesson for today. Go out and see if you can spot a few butterflies. Um, and butterflies eat nectar from flowers. You probably should add some flowers into your farm scene as well to make sure those butterflies can eat. All right, so butterfly is our last one. Excuse me for one second. Pyro boys, can you please be quiet? Thank you. Okay. We are going to start with, oh, I guess I have to show you. <laughs> we're going to start with the eyes. Now we're going to make the eyes a little bit bigger on our drawing of our butterfly than they would be in real life, but that's okay. So we're gonna make them overlapping. And also Mike, anybody who's had me for kindergarten and has learned about James Rizzi, he sort of looks like James Rizzi eyes when it comes to the James Rizzi animals. So we have our eyes here, and then we're gonna create a little half circle for the face. And then a little bit bigger oval or part of the body. Just stacking all of our things. Then we're going to make a pointed. Um, almost like an elongated, rounded triangle for the rest of the body. Okay, so then we're going to do the wings. And the wings can really be kind of whatever shape you want it to be if you want them to... Um, be rounded or oval or have sort of wavy edges. But the big thing about butterflies is that they're symmetrical. So whatever you draw on the left side should also be on the right side. 
And you can also make whatever kind of patterns you want on your butterfly. And of course, the more designs you make on the butterfly, the more colors you can add when you're coloring them in. I'm just gonna do um, a basic wing on the left and try to make it identical on the right. Not quite as big, that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, we know that. The, the top part of the wing is a little bigger. The bottom part of the wing is a little smaller. Now once you get your wings drawn, you can start adding your patterns. So I'm gonna add some, of course you know I'm gonna add some circles. But whatever you do on the one side, you should also do on the other. And then I can make all these things different colors if I want to. And then, of course, the last thing we need is the antennas. They come off the head. Like that. And then we have our butterfly. Put this here for a minute. And then I'm going to show you my final farm. And I'll also take a picture and post it on my page if you want to refer to it at all. Here's my final Papa's farm. You can see I added my owl, oops, owl over here on that tree that I just inserted on the side. My butterfly, which I cut out and glued on, and I gave him some flowers. My rooster right here on the fence, and then my chicks over here with the hen. And then I colored in all of my grass. I tried to make it different shades, sort of hard to tell on this with the lighting in here, but and then I put some tufts of grass underneath the animals. And of course, the pug looks all worried in the corner, so concerned about everybody's well being. Okay, so I'll post this on my page and let me get one. Oh no! Ran away. Hanky! Hank, come here! I am gonna get Hank because we have to have one more Hank goodbye for the weekend. So hold on. Ziggy, go get a Ziggy. This is Hank. You gotta come up here, Hank. Oh, he's not gonna come. Come on. All right. I don't think I can get him. He th he wants this chip, but he's afraid that I'm gonna pick him up. <laughs> so um, I'll see if he comes over here. Come on. You don't get it. Ziggy's gonna get it. So just a reminder that next week we are at eleven and we will be doing a pet shop. And if you have any thoughts about what you want in the pet shop, just let me know. You can comment here or um, comment on my page or you can comment on the um, on the farm picture because I know that would be my most recent post. Because I have just a few things written down. I only have four things and you know we need about 15. So I would love to have your ideas. Um, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, well, we'll see if I can grab him. Nope, Ziggy, don't get it. Nope, okay, I'm sorry. You'll get to see Hank on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you then. Bye.